Hey everybody, it's Dan, the Git School Dude, once again with another Git tutorial video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use git ls files, which is technically a plumbing command, which really just means it's rarely used by users and used mostly by Git internals, but I've found this command to be quite useful myself in certain situations, so I'm here to share that information with you today. Today we're going to be using the Hello World repo, which can be found at gitlab.com slash gitschooldude slash hello if you want to follow along at home. So in this repo, I can type make clean to clean, make to build, and it just creates this hello binary as output, which I can run, and it prints some stuff to the screen. If I do git status, you can see that I've got a new file here, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and you can see that I have one untracked file, box.o, which is a product of building. So if I make clean, for example, and do git status, you can see it's not there, but when I make, you can see that it is there. And this is going to be important in a minute. So you may recall from my earlier videos, the tracked files are files Git is told to care about, and untracked files are everything else. There's actually more to it than that when you consider ignored files for each tracked and untracked files list. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first, let's just run uh, git ls files with no options. You can see that this command by default is just printing all the files that are listed as tracked files at the current commit, which is head. Of course, head just means the commit that you're on, on your current branch, and in this case, I'm on this branch. So I want to point out here that, you know, track files are usually your source code, right? Here's some source code. Uh, here's a script we use to do some stuff. Here's more source code. Here's a script we use to do some stuff. Now, uh, we also have the tracked hidden files, the git ignore file that tells your repo which untracked files to not show on a git status, and some other files like the make file and some of the docker file stuff that we've done before. One thing I want to point out here is that this file is actually listed as a tracked file even though it doesn't exist in any commit yet, but it is staged in the index and in the world of git this counts as the file being tracked. So when we run git ls files, we see a dump of all the track files. Makes sense, right? Well, let's take a look at some of the other switches. If we can look at the man page here, git ls files. Spell it right. Spelling it right helps. So here's the man page. Now, if you look at some of these options here, for example, check this out, dash dash ignored. Show only ignored files in the output. <clears throat> That sounds useful, right? Let's say I want to see a list of only the ignored files. Well, let's give that a shot. Git ls files ignored. Oh, fatal. ls files ignored needs some exclude pattern. What? Does it say that it needs an exclude pattern? When showing files in the index, print only those matched by an exclude pattern. When showing other files, show only those matched by an exclude pattern. This doesn't make any sense to me. So I went through these switches and I figured out what they actually mean. And I put all that information in this file. I'll commit this file into the repo so you can clone it and see it anytime you want to. Let's take a look. So here I've listed the type of file on the left, a brief description of what that means, and then the command you need to run to see that set of files. So for example, to see the tracked files, which is basically typically your source code, readmes, basically any inputs to your, to your build and run process for your software system, uh, you run git ls files. And that's what we just did in the very first example. Now there's technically two types of tracked files. There's regular tracked files, and then there's the tracked files that are also ignored. Now that might sound a little weird, but what that means is that if a tracked file happens to match git ignore rule, then it's considered a tracked but ignored file. Now you might wonder, well, what's the use case for that? By definition, if you're ignoring a file, you want to ignore it, right? Well, there are some exceptions, and I'm going to show you an example of that in a minute. But essentially, in order to add a file that is in a git ignore rule, you have to force add it with this dash f to the index when it's first created. In order to see track files that are also ignored, we run this command. So let's give that a shot. It lists no files. So that means that in our repository here, in our Hello World repo, we have no tracked files that are also ignored. Now I said there's some special cases for this. So let's take a look at this for example. Look at our git ignore here. You can see that our git ignore is ignoring our final output, hello, which is the binary that we run. And we have a pattern to ignore documentation files. The idea there being that we have a Doxygen folder and the output of Doxygen could be a PDF or 
HTML, what have you. So the reason PDFs are ignored is because you don't want to commit binary outputs to your repository, right? But what if we have a PDF that we want to commit anyways? So take a look at what's under the source directory here. We have box.pdf. Now this is an empty file, but this would represent the documentation for how to use a box class in this example. If we were to add box PDF, you'll see that Git is telling us that this file is ignored based on our Git ignore rules, but that we can override that using the dash F switch if we want to. So let's go ahead and try that. When we do that, Git status shows that it has been added as a new file. And if we run the same command that a minute ago showed nothing, we see box PDF here. I hope that makes sense. So what we did there was we force added a file, a PDF file to be tracked. And because it matches the git ignore rule, it is now listed by this command. So let's go through the other use cases. We'll do this one next. So this should list all untracked files. As you can see, the untracked files that we're seeing are the hello binary, which is actually ignored by our git ignore rules, but also box.o, which as you can see is not git ignored because it's showing up in git status. So that's the use case for seeing all the untracked files. If we want to see only the ignored untracked files, we want to use this command. You can see that we're only seeing the untracked files matching the .gitignore rules. So if we want to see the untracked files that are not ignored, we use this command. And you can see that we're going to see box.o. So the only reason that I left box.o as a non-ignored untracked file is to illustrate exactly what I'm showing here. Of course, what we really want to do is add this to the .gitignore rules, which we can do like this. Now, git status will show that it is ignored, and we can add that to the index so that we aren't carrying around that box.o in our git status like it's showing here. So I hope that makes sense. You can use this file as a reference to see, uh, to get a listing of each one of these types of files, because I find the man page to be very difficult to understand. So for those of you that are still awake, you might be wondering, well, when am I ever gonna use this command? Well, the answer is, to be honest with you, rarely. But when you need it, it's very useful. So here's a couple scenarios in your software development career where you might use this. Let's say somebody asks you how many files are in your repo's current branch. Well, you can use this command to get that number easily. You could do something like a git archive and then extract it and count those files. You can't necessarily just do a find which will list all files and then pipe it to some kind of counter because a find is going to count all the .git files too. Let's say someone asks you the size of all the untracked files produced by your build. Well, you could use these commands to get a list of those files and then use that information to add up the size of all the files. Let's say you're given a task where someone asks you for a list of these committed files that are also ignored as part of a .gitignore rule cleanup effort. Well, we can easily use these commands to get that information. Here's one that I've done several times. When you're coming onto a new team, uh, you're learning a new big project and really want to understand the build and test process quickly. Well, you can actually use these commands to figure out what is produced by a particular build or test and when without having to dig through the complex make files or chew through find commands and timestamp comparisons. So you can use this type of stuff to sort of, you know, for a new project you're not familiar with, look at the list of files that are both created uh, by the build and the files that are tracked and the ones that are ignored and you can kind of get a sense of what's going on in the project from a high level. And then of course sometimes you have to uh, clean up a bloated repo and you need to uh, essentially purge the file tree of unneeded files like PDFs or other large binaries. You can use these commands to sort of help narrow down uh, which files that you're looking for. I hope you find this content useful. Do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave me a comment if you have questions or ideas for future videos. I'm Dan the Get School Dude, and I'll see you guys next time.